Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thank you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're here for a second or third or fourth painting, thank you so much for coming back and I look forward to seeing what you guys paint. So today's video is perfect for my first time painters. These are great videos to just kind of get you comfortable with the brush, comfortable with mixing your paint, and the kind of the way these are set up, you're going to do kind of a crazy abstract background. You are welcome to switch out colors if you want. Um, and then we'll use black paint and put a silhouette design on there. Um, and that kind of solidifies your composition. So again, this is excellent practice just to get comfortable with the process of painting and perfect for my first time and beginner painters. If you want to do a different silhouette design, um, just Google uh, the subject matter and silhouette of what do you want to do and feel free to switch it up and make the painting your own. Use this as just kind of a, a guideline, a step-by-step -step of what to do. Um, with that being said, in the description box below, you're going to see a link to a supply kit and in that supply kit is everything that you need to grab um, materials, paints, brushes, canvas for this particular painting. So check out the supply kit, grab the materials that you need, and then pick up the video again. With practice, you get better and more comfortable. So keep on finding ways to have a creative outlet on a monthly basis. Your future self will be very grateful that you did. So uh, I think it's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, so this is going to be a really fun painting. So get all your supplies together and make sure you turn on your favorite music. And as always, make sure you take your progress pictures as you go through the process today. But we're going to start with light blue and we're starting with that medium or small flat brush. And you can see where I pull a little bit of white aside and then take a tiny amount of blue and mix in with it. And you want to go really, really light blue because this is going to be our lightest spot first. Now the place where you want your focus, your lightest spot, just make an X marks, an X mark. <laughs> and this is going to be the kind of the point that we radiate all of our brush strokes out from um, as we fill in our background. You're going to be radiating your brush strokes out from that center and we're going to kind of mimic this direction for the whole portion of our background painting. Now, and you can see as I mix the color a second or third time, um, just kind of pulling a little bit more white into it, keeping it very light because this is going to be kind of the focus, the lightest point of our background. And you can see where I'm kind of filling in that space and overlapping the brush strokes to kind of get these radial marks coming out from the center. And here we're gonna go a little bit darker with our blue. And you can see that I just added a touch more blue to it and still keeping with those radial brush strokes going out from the center. We're starting where our light blue was, overlapping it a little bit with this darker blue and continuing those marks to radiate out from the center. And if you're using student grade paint, I'm gonna encourage that you actually use your paint a little bit thicker. So that way when you overlap your colors, you can do a little bit of blending and then we can kind of soften some of the edges once we fill in our background. And again, you're doing a great job. Remember to breathe and just relax. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. It takes a lot of courage. All right, so make sure you pause the video, take your progress photo just to get some of these early stages in there. And again, I'm gonna make a slightly darker blue than I was just using. Your shade may be a little bit different than mine. So for your shade, I just want you to go a few shades darker than you were just using. So like I said, your shade might be a little bit of a different color than mine, but like I said, just a little bit darker than the shade you were just using. Still, you're overlapping some of this darker blue on top of the lighter blue. And if you can, um, kind of feel if you've got your thick paint on there and you can feel the pressure, you can kind of blend a little bit together. And sometimes people are inclined to finger paint to do some of their blending. So go right ahead and do that if you feel like it. 
And if you have to make your color a second or third time, don't stress about it being the exact same shade of blue. As long as you're within range, that is perfectly acceptable. All right, another good spot to pause the video and take another progress photo. As we make our paint a little bit darker, going more with that straight blue, but again, just go a little bit darker than the last shade of blue you were using. And we're gonna be filling in the remaining canvas space around the perimeter. And if you are painting a stretched canvas, I recommend that you carry this color over the sides of the canvas. So that way when you hang it on the wall, it looks nice having that color wrap around the edge. But again, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting at home and taking time out of your day to hang out with me and let me walk you through the process, so thanks. I do tell all my students, if you have anything that has stressed you out, frustrated you, irritated you this week, put it into your painting and we may not solve your problem, but you'll feel at least a little bit more relaxed and less stressed about it after the process of painting. So try to find creative outlets for yourself as regularly as possible. If you have any parts of the canvas showing through, just kind of take your color, uh, paint on top of it, and take another progress photo. We're going to be doing a second layer on top of this. All right, and kind of starting over again, going back to the just the pure white now, starting back in the center. And we are, I am painting kind of quick on this, so I don't want you to let the paint dry as you move into this next step. Um, jump right in so that way you can do some of this blending uh, while your paint is wet. And this is called a wet on wet blending method. And you can see that I'm still moving my brush in that same kind of radial direction out from that center point and overlapping some of these other shades of blue. And I am using kind of light pressure on my brush. And with that light pressure, it's picking up some of that color from underneath and mixing it with the new color that I'm applying on top of there. And we're gonna basically just recreate that process, starting from the center, working our way out, smoothing some of these transitions between our uh, shades of blue. We'll even introduce um, some teal and some other uh, darker colors. But feel free, you are the master of your painting right now. So anything that you want to do, if you want to introduce other colors that I'm not using, if you want your painting a little bit more smooth or blended or choppy, um, completely your style. Because right now you can kind of do anything that you want. It will be when we get into the black silhouette design, that's what kind of solidifies our composition and our canvas. So right now, enjoy the fact that you're kind of an abstract painter you're just moving paint on the canvas and getting comfortable with your blending and comfortable with the painting process you're doing a great job if you need to grab more of your color more of the medium blue or darker blue um, because maybe your paint's drying out a little bit go ahead and just add more of that color on top um, and continue with your blending and mixing you can actually go back and forth with this for quite a while. So even if you need to go back to the white in the center, add that and blend it on through, um, perfectly acceptable. Now remember every now and then, um, I want you to get out of your chair, walk three to five, 10 feet away from your painting and look at it from a distance and kind of assess what it looks like from that distance. As you paint, you're about two feet in front of your canvas and things look entirely different two feet in front of your face compared to 10 feet away. And the normal viewing distance for artwork and most things in life is about 10 feet away. So as you get into being creative, get in the habit of stepping away and looking at your artwork from that distance. Nice, and if you happen to overlap some of the um, darker blue into the white, maybe you don't want it, you go back with the white, you can see how I'm taking some of that lighter blue and the white into the darker rays. Um, with this being the sea turtle silhouette, you're imagining that you're looking at the turtle from underneath and kind of seeing this light space and then as it gets darker. But again, play with it and make it whatever you want for your abstract background. All right, go ahead and pause the video, take another progress photo. And then here I'm actually gonna add in a little bit of light teal. 
You can add in uh, teal if you want. You can add in light purple. Uh, you can really kind of add in any color that you want to kind of make your water the shades that you want. Still kind of playing with that wet on wet blending method and using light pressure as I move my brush on top of it, continuing with those kind of radiating brush strokes from the lighter source, from that white area um, in the top corner. If you want to grab more of that direct teal, again, you can even throw some purple in here or more of your darker blue. Completely, again, anything that you want to do for your painting right now, go ahead and do it. And you did notice that sometimes I wiped my brush off before I went back to do some of the light blending. If you've got a lot of paint buildup on your brush, go ahead and just wipe it off and then go back to moving um, the paint on your canvas and doing a little bit of blending. You can add a touch of water to your brush, but you really never wanna add more than 15% water to your paint or have your brush dripping wet with water. All right, pause the video, take a progress photo. And we're actually, I do want you to let this dry before you move into your black silhouette design. And you're gonna move down to that small pointy brush, black paint, and we're gonna start drawing the shapes of our turtle. And I do recommend that you maybe watch this part, draw the shape of your turtle um, on a scrap sheet of paper a few times before you go to the canvas. And here we're starting with the turtle shell, just kind of outlining um, kind of a rounded triangle shape to where the wider part is the shoulders and we'll put the head there and then we'll put some arms on our turtle and feet. The head is just going to be kind of a horseshoe shape attached to our first shape that we drew. And again, just do your best to mimic what you see on the canvas or on the screen, the lines that you see me drawing. And it's perfectly okay to pause the video at different spots to kind of observe the shapes that you need to look at. Again, kind of keeping light pressure with your brush. You can treat your brush kind of like a pencil and use just the tip of it to do a little bit of drawing. You're doing a great job. Remember to breathe and relax. And then now we're gonna fill in the shape of the turtle that you just made. If you wanna put two turtles on here, maybe two of them facing each other so they're kind of kissing, or if you wanna put a big turtle and a little turtle, completely your painting, make this and adjust it to what you want. If you are inclined to maybe fill in the silhouette, uh, fill in this turtle shape with a different color, go right ahead and do that. And if you change up anything, and even if you don't change anything up, please email me photos, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Because again, I just like to see what you guys are doing, um, seeing how you change it up, or even just how the instructions are coming across. So let me know how you're doing at home. All right. Pause the video and take your progress photo. Now we're gonna start moving into the kind of details, the foliage around the perimeter of the canvas. And you can make these anything that you want. I do recommend if you want Google um, coral reef silhouettes or underwater silhouettes and kind of make this your own and add other elements that are important to you. I'm going to be adding kind of a lot of seagrass, maybe some kelp. Um, some of my students, when I've taught this, have put in little seahorses, uh, different types of coral. Some have even switched up colors and started to decorate it. So it's a really colorful coral reef. You, again, have freedom to change this and make what you want. You are getting excellent, excellent practice every time that you paint and it does get easier with more practice. So at any point during this uh, process, pause the video so you can observe any shape that I want or that I paint, or even just move it towards the end of the video, pause it and just kind of mimic what you see on the canvas or the parts that you want to put on yours. And as you're painting um, around the perimeter, if you want to carry any of these black um, shapes over the edge of your stretched canvas, uh, since you're painting the edges, 
go right ahead and do that. If you didn't paint your edges and you want to now, if you want to paint all of them black, that looks kind of nice too when you hang it on the wall. And for some of my first time painters, some of those tiny, tiny lines, um, you want to use light pressure with your brush. And again, those get better with more practice. If they, you find them very challenging and you're not quite ready for some of those super tiny lines, um, you can switch to a Sharpie marker and go right on top of the acrylic paint with that. So you've got a few options. I do recommend using the brush just be again because it is such good practice, but you can use a marker if needed. And every now and then, again, remember to just pause the video, take a progress picture, just because it is nice when you look back um, and just kind of see how your painting changes, how your eye interprets uh, your painting as you add another element or another um, dark line or shadow area. You're doing great. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you feel a little more relaxed now at the end of painting compared to when you started. I'm really, really, really proud of you for painting at home, so uh, good job. Don't wait too long to do another painting and just kind of hone in the skills that you learned today. It will be more comfortable um, the next time that you go to paint. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me in those photos, paint with lovejoy, or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'm a fully solo production here, so seeing your feedback, hearing your comments, um, really kind of gives me motivation to keep making these videos, and it is growing really, really nicely. Um, when you are ready, I do have something that you can kind of uh, level up to. So I want you to check out my main website, paintwithlovejoy.com, and I feature my Paint Your Pet class, and it is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check that out when you're ready to kind of take the next level of painting at home. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, things that you would like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond to all of those pretty quickly. And like I said earlier, your feedback is definitely keeping me uh, going and keeping me make more videos. So it is your support that's making this happen. Um, so yeah, thanks again for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored, truly grateful that uh, you're finding a lot of help in these videos and enjoying the process of painting. So until next time, cheers. Yeah.